in setting the record straight about her political ambitions. And you have set the record straight to some extent. You've told us why you want to be um, governor of Kirinyaga County. You've clarified um, how your party um, views uh, the party, well, any party out there in the political um, landscape. You're leaving it to you, your various branches to yes. decide whom they will support yeah. and who they want to um, go with. But to what extent um, is your decision and your position, uh, does it have to do with the realization that um, the uh, next election will be won by President Kenyatta and Jubilee? I cannot predict about the, ne national, uh, about the next elections. Let me not enter into the speculative game. Every party participating in that election is getting ready. All I can say for now is that after consulting with my people on the ground, they have made it clear their choice for 2017, and I'm okay with their choice. How can you be okay, uh, Ms. Karua? And when you know, when you know on record, you have been very critical of the government of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, particularly when it comes to governance. And now you are saying you are, you are, you are comfortable, your are people voting for them. Surely, how can that be? That my people's choice is not dependent on my views. It shouldn't be. It is because their you, choice. You are, you are a leader. No. In democracy, people's choice is individual. And you must respect choice. If it was dependent on a leader, then it's parties which should be casting a single vote that is through, an their, party, situation, through their party leaders. You see, if it was dependent on the party, it's the party leader who should be casting the vote. But this right is given to the individual. And I think in a young democracy, the media also has a duty to educate the people, to help nurture democracy. When you ask questions which are suggesting, like people should follow blindly what a leader says, and then tomorrow you criticize a certain area or the people for following a leader, it's a contradiction which doesn't help democracy. I am one who holds the view that people should not even agree to the six-piece voting that is being pushed by political party heads. When you do that, you run the risk of getting in bad leadership just because they belong to a political persuasion. So you can elect a president on one party, a governor on another, an MCA on another, because apart from party, you must also look at the capability, the track record of each candidate. I think we have a duty to break it down to the people. And the role of the county government which is distinct from the role of the national government. And a governor from any county must work with the president of the day, irrespective of the party they are elected on. Because Kenya's uh, governor, government is one, exercised at two levels, at the county and at the national. So it doesn't matter who is president at the top, all county governments work with that president. And this is something that Kenyans need to understand before they start accusing Governor X of working with Jubilee when they are not in that persuasion. So once we understand that, being in a political party is not being in an enemy organization when you don't belong to the next party. It's competing, and you are mm -hmm. competing on your preferred mode of giving service to the people. Yet. There are so many things in this country and in all countries of the world which cannot work without bipartisan support, support from both parties. For instance, the fight against corruption. Where, where does this leave your cooperation with yeah. the opposition, the broader court alliance? I think the, the, when elections come, that cooperation fades. And this has been the history in Kenya. In 1992, when multi party came and we were elected, Immediately the elections ended. The former President Mwai Kibaki, then leader of DP, Honorable Kenneth Matiba, and the late Jaramogi Odinga, Oginga Odinga, all leaders of the three main opposition parties then, got together and held a press conference 
and they heralded a new era where when we went to parliament as opposition we crystallized together to battle Kanu which had an overwhelming number in the parliament and from then on opposition always works together after elections after elections but towards the general elections opposition breaks into the parties so the time has come it's election time we are now back to working independently and we are going to elections independently and that has been the tradition except in 2002 when the opposition formed the national rainbow coalition to oust, oust Kano. even now there are calls for an opposition alliance a super alliance but, yes but now kenya has said and did come out openly before then in um, our meeting two months ago in Nakuru that now Kenya will approach elections on its own as a political party it will also leave its branches to decide which candidate to support and we also agreed we will not field a presidential candidate although we did not announce it then why that's the date why, why we made the so? decision why so uh, why why would not Kenya opt to go it alone without the other opposition it's a, you mentioned something about it doesn't matter who is in leadership it's a choice mm -hmm. we discussed as a party all the branches and we arrived at that decision that we do not wish to be in an alliance and we leave it to our branches to support so your branches are free to um, align themselves either with <laughs> the um, governing party or yeah. with opposition um, yeah. alliances yeah. as they see fit yeah what does that do though for not Kenya as a party nationally because it just seems as if it's a house then divided no, um, it's a house respecting the choices of the people if not Kenya had a presidential candidate then it would be house divided if they don't back their candidate but when you don't have a presidential candidate and there is lack of total unanimity on what direction then you give that room Mm. Yeah. So your decision caught uh, the opposition and the general public um, by yeah. surprise. So have you engaged with your other opposition colleagues um, to have the conversation about, you know, this is what I want to do with myself, I'm going it alone, I'm not aligning. Just I because it is politics. I do it? not think that uh, we owed it to each other to account for every move. Remember, now Kenya was not part of any coalition. Let's be very open. And you know that. We therefore did not owe it to anybody. Maybe as a courtesy, did to you extend that to courtesy? friends? You can call and say, I don't have to say whether I have talked to anyone. But as a courtesy, because it's not a secret, you tell people, look, I'm not available for those things. We are doing it differently. There's a feeling and we have not been available for all opposition ventures, but we have been available on the issues we felt. Uh, we we agreed and and this has been you know it's something we mutually agreed and you can see even within the opposition you can see individual parties doing their own jig you see so why should it be different for that Kenya that Kenya was not part of any alliance and it's not gonna be even now there's a feeling that uh, you know people thinking that mother Karua has just re realized that unless she, she she's stops attacking uh, and criticizing uh, Jubilee, which is of a whole many supporting in central Kenya. She will get nowhere. So she has decided to go back home. And that's why you never utter any other word from today onwards up to election day. You will never utter one word criticizing Uhuru Kenyatta. I think you are most mistaken. My voice will Correct. always be there on national issues when it's called for. And I'm not a person who makes a statement every day. But my voice and the voice of NAC Kenya has been there on all issues of national importance. And I want to say this. Criticizing the government is a very patriotic duty. Because if we do not point out shortcomings, then the people will never get the service they deserve. Mm. And I have never known of any party, whether in government or outside government, that has stood and said they support corruption I have never seen any party that will stand and say they support nepotism the things that are said in our national values and principles of governance 
that these are things we should not do. No political party owns up to them even when they do them. So I have news for you. Yes. That mm -hmm. my voice it will be there bad. on all issues of national importance. Even when I was in the Kibaki government as a member of yeah. cabinet, there are things I would say no to. No, I will continue being myself. And that's the only way I can give the best service. And I'm sure that even the people we criticize, whether in government or out, deep in their hearts, they know it's out of patriotism. And what? they sometimes may appreciate it. Okay, let's hear from our viewers. Huh? Yeah. Uh, the question was expediency or pragmatism. Yeah. Uh, Martha Karua stands for the truth. I wish she could still run for presidency in this country. But since she's chosen to run for the governor's seat in Kunyaga, let them decide. Um, but she is the epitome of good leadership we're yearning for in this country. Um, Martha is a national leader and should play her role as such. So she needs a godfather, and that is Uhuru, um, for her political uh, rebirth. Um, she's just being emotional, but she won't make it. She made a wrong decision. She is no longer a national figure, um, Patrick. Um, Benson, I totally agree with your stand, hence you've won the hearts of many. I wish you well from Taraka Nithi. You're my role model. Um, and then finally, Martha Karua, it seems you're struggling to tacti tactically justify your decision to vie for governorship, but somehow trying to hide behind the people of Kirinyaga. Can the real Iron Lady stand up to be counted Siema in Nairobi? So it's a mixed bag of responses. <laughs> it's always a mixed bag. No single person will ever get 100% okay from the people. So I'm happy with the comments. And I'll say this. I respect their views and I will respect one's view however mistaken and even if I don't agree with it because it's your view. Mm. Yeah. Is, it a coincidence, is it a coincidence that you announced your uh, intention to run for governor of um, Kirinaga soon mm. after the announcement by Anne Waiguru? Is it a coincidence? Is it soon? Is it soon? That is the question. Would after. you give me what you call soon? Okay, after. There are so after. many candidates in Kirinyaga yes. for governor. Why are you asking me about one person? Because she's, she's we even do not know how many other candidates are going to come after me, isn't it? And I will say this. Yes. The candidates in Jubilee are not candidates. They are aspirants mm. until their parties do the nomination. And I'm not going to comment on any single ca uh, aspirant until that party gives the candidate. Mm. And I will not choose who. So there's okay. a question from Ben. I'm not going to answer. Uh, there's a question from Ben in Nairobi. Yes. Uh, being an effective governor requires that you're able to control the county assembly in terms of numbers in order to execute your agenda, or else you'll be impeached by the MCAs even before you're sworn in. Yeah. My question is, are you going to field candidates for MCA in every ward in Kirinyaga, and don't you think campaigning for them will bring friction with the Jubilee establishment? I have just said, and I want to confirm, now Kenya will be fielding candidates for all seats except the president, the presidency. Right. So yes, and, and there is no contradiction. At, we campaign as a team. It's always been like that. Even when I campaigned as MP, I campaigned with my councillors. So I'll campaign as governor. I'll campaign with uh, my candidates for the North Kenya's candidates for MCAs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, please ask Karua why the double standard? She's been ruthlessly critical of Uhuru and Ruto's government for as long as I can remember. Right now, she says she can't criticize the Kirinyaga governor. Uh, you're not being honest. No, I have just said I will not give my comments on his performance. And I am letting his time run because I've declared interest in the same position. I want him to serve his time. I'll be liberal with my comments when elections are called. Okay? It's not double standards. It's just postponing those comments. And I'm entitled to. But even while you still held out for the presidency, yeah. you were criticizing President Kenyatta. Yeah. So it's a choice a I have standard. made. Yes, it's a choice I have made. And I'm not going to give my comments. People have been liberal. They've already given their card on the performance. I don't have to add to it at this stage. I on? want to give him some space for now. On 2nd November, yeah. when you were reading a statement on behalf of NAC Kenya, yes. you were quoted as saying that a government that is unable yes. or reluctant yeah. to protect public resources 
Her no business being in power. Is illegitimate. Yes. Or has no legitimacy. Yes. What is your position on the current government? Therefore, we were calling on the Jubilee administration to take up his mandate and do those things. Otherwise, it becomes illegitimate. That's the position. And when I do become governor of Kirinyaga, God willing, should my government then not fulfill its mandate or sh be shy of doing the things it was elected to do, it loses legitimacy. So it is a theme that runs through any government that has sought votes from the people. So what do you think about the current government as far as corruption or public resources are concerned? I think they are good on their statements, short on their actions. And if you look at the statement now Kenya issued on the Afia House scandal, because the president in the governance summit in State House had appeared helpless and said, Nifanya Nini. Mm. We wrote a raft of things which we suggested to him as loyal citizens of this country, loyal to our country. But Mr. President, these are sort of things you can do. You sent we them, need to you sent them to them. They were in the public domain. They in the public domain, but during the demonstration they were yeah. tear gas and prevented from delivering the uh, the um, petition. But, um, but we didn't attempt to do the petition ourselves. Mm -hmm. But once it's in the public domain, they have it. Because, you see, we all should help. So if the government is saying give us suggestions, you give. And then we see whether they are doing anything about it. And I will say that they have so far demonstrated shyness in dealing with perpetrators of corruption. And even when I was talking in Kirinyaga, I said, I will forever fight against corruption. So they have and demonstrated shyness in protecting public resources. In protecting public resources. So we are calling upon them to up their game. So are they legitimate? We have said if they fail to do, they become illegitimate. So it's up to them. You see? It's up to them. And we are entitled because to participate in governance. And therefore, our participation as NAC Kenya is to point out the shortcomings and to say, these are the things you could do to rectify this. And we've done it. You have lived a rather clean political life, per se, yeah, yeah. until the issue of BAT came about. Yeah. One Paul Hopkins. Yeah. Alleged that they gave you 7.5 million, but you yeah. clarified and said... Gave it my campaign. Gave your campaign yes. 2 million. Yeah. Who is Paul Hopkins and why would he give your campaign 2 million? Look, I think that is an, a, a question that you ask which perplexes me. My campaign was fundraising publicly. And therefore people could come and contribute, those who agreed with us. He came in and contributed like any other person. And we kept a record of who contributed. And he came and met me thereafter without any demands. Mm. If you saw those allegations even from the independent, they were putting it in quotes and they clearly said it was not clear whether I knew of the demands they were making. I didn't. And uh, that is not a matter of corruption. It's a matter of what in politics would be called dirty money. But I was not aware. And I like to be upfront. We did not deny receiving because as a matter of fact, he contributed. And he contributed according to him as an individual. Let me just check. Uh, the company did not contribute. Let me just check with you, Charles. Is there somewhere you were going with this? Yeah. Because we actually have um, uh, had uh, Ms. Karu on the show before, um, oh. around the time when yeah. these uh, allegations were, um, were current, and we had a fairly thorough discussion about them. Yeah. So w was there a link to... As a leader, money comes towards your campaign secretariat. Yeah. Somebody says he's contributing because he aligns or agrees with you. Wouldn't it be good just to do a back check? By the way, we don't ask questions. In a public fundraising, because some even contributed through the pay bill, you have no chance to ask them. They come to the secretariat. Your manifesto is out there in the public. You don't question people bringing in the donations unless you have reason to suspect. And if someone says it's their money, you take it. Yeah. Unless if an issue is raised. And I did not in that campaign receive corporate donations.
at all. So I'll come to the panelists now yeah. because the question we asked our viewers was yeah. whether uh, Ms. Karua's yeah. decision to yeah. um, go for Kirinyaga's uh, governorship is um, expedient or pragmatic. Um, and, and, and the line of questioning we've taken is that this is expediency. Yeah. Um, uh, Ms. Karua has been in politics for a while. Yeah. She's read the, uh, the mood of the people and um, is bringing herself back into um, the fold. Would you agree that this is expediency or just pragmatism, that there's nothing wrong with this? What's your take on yeah, that? There's nothing wrong at all in what she's done. Uh, she's, she, has, she has learned. She knows that she got 40,000 and even trying to go next year. It's the Jubilee has consolidated and so it's so, so much. She has no chance at all to become president. So why not go home? And, but going home, she also realized that some of the candidates who are going to run against her, there are some people, there are they're, 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 they're people who she is very likely to talk about when it comes to corruption. So she, has, she will have a field day. So I think she will take advantage of that. Charles. Honestly speaking, <laughs> I think I still see the principle in Martha Karua. Principle to the How extent so? that although she's alone, she's saying democracy dictates that you give everybody a chance to vote like they desire without making any influences. Mm. And like she confessed, she made a decision that is good for her and good for the people. Watch the order good for her and good for the people. What do you make though of uh, Mutegi's um, uh, um, reasoning that um, there's a bit of a, of, um, of um, what's the word, um, st strategy here, yeah. that it's very likely that within Jubilee there'll be one candidate who will emerge, who will be tainted um, by corruption and this puts the president in a difficult position um, because if that person um, or if anyone tainted by corruption um, gets the uh, jubilee ticket, then the president can't tell us that he's serious about the fight against corruption. And I still go back to my word. She made a decision that is good for her. That mm -hmm. means it's strategic mm -hmm. and good for the people. That means it's for expediency. So there are several ticks on that front. Yes. Um, the president finds himself uh, outmaneuvered mm -hmm. to some extent. Um, She's so ahead, like the proverbial giraffe. I think we are jumping the gun, we? and we are also, uh, as press, you, as press, you were also guilty of double standards. Around election time, there is always realignment. You see, yeah, yeah. Uhuru, in 2007, was with Raila in the Orange Movement before it became a party, and they defeated us as government in the referendum yeah, of 2005. Yeah as the orange <coughs> when we were advocating for banana towards the election he comes he makes a choice comes and joins Kibaki not joining his party but supporting and I suppose his actions must have been informed by his voter base and many other considerations this is not the same so what you? I'm saying this is not a new thing no. even Orenko who is in Koda and Anyang Nyongo were never no. always with Raila you see? So it's strategic. In life, in politics, in business, and even in professions, decisions must always be strategic. That's what you're saying. That's mm. exactly what you're saying. Decisions must always be strategic. And they must be for the good of the cause that you're advocating. Do you see this change as far as the growth of democracy in Kenya is concerned, especially shifting alliances by politicians? I think that uh, that continues everywhere. But what I would like to see more is growth of political parties. And that's why I will not agree with anybody saying, fold up NAC Kenya. Let there be a menu. Let those parties grow. And as our democracy matures, we will see less and less political parties. Mm. But always people should have a choice. Britain, for the longest, had two main political parties. The Labour Party and the Conservatives. The Liberals took so long to emerge yet now they dominate Scotland. UKIP has just come from nowhere. What the world is telling us when you look at South Africa, when you look at the West is that there is need for people to have a broad range of choices which will satisfy their needs. Now Kenya is there to offer that space democratic space to the people considering that we fought for so long to bring this country back to Mount Party. Okay, so yeah. we'll take a break now. This is Cheche. We're live on Citizen TV. Yeah. We'll be back with Ms. Karua after this break. Our SMS number, I remind you, is 22422. And our Twitter hashtag is Cheche. <laughs>